Another thing I was fascinated with was the shadow. I want to ask you, just because you're not only a dancer in this production, you are a co-producer of Intensio, and I think that holds a whole other register in terms of your implication and your involvement in the development of the project. So how or why did you decide to go on this adventure? Uh, we started back about two years ago, talking, st started, started talking with the Joyce. We wanted to create um, an evening my father and I, my family, wanted to create an evening uh, of contemporary choreography more in the European direction because um, I grew up in Europe, I grew up in Wiesbaden, Germany, and I, from early childhood, I used to seeing, I used to see Netherlands dancer, Kulberg Ballet, um, many other contemporary uh, choreographers, but more in the European sense. When I came to New York, I sort of missed it, and I always wanted to perform that. I, um, I joined ABT in 2008. I performed a lot of um, American modern stuff, modern dance, uh, Merce Cunningham, uh, Paul Taylor, everything in that direction, and I've, I feel very privileged to have done so. Uh, but I missed that European aspect. I, I sat next to Pina Bausch when she brought her company to Wiesbaden, and I wanted to explore something in this direction. Plus, I feel like we have such great dancers, and ABT employs us for 36 weeks in the year, and we have 16 weeks off. So in a way, it's a win-win situation because we get to do exciting new work. It's a dream for every dancer to um, get stuff created on you personally by a living choreographer. And we get to tour the world. We already booked uh, tours to Houston and Buenos Aires. We're going to be at the Joyce, who is as well a co-producer, just like uh, Courtney and Elter, Sunny Artist Management. They're sitting somewhere there. <laughs> There's Courtney. Um, and um, it has been an intense journey. So, Intensio and Intense Journey, it's also about pushing your personal boundaries, I would yes. imagine. Um, every, as you probably saw, every choreographer has a very specific language. Um, and every piece will, it happened to be very con contrasty. Everything is different. And whenever you work with a choreographer, you're trying to adapt yourself to, to that language. And you, go, you grow through that. It, as well as if you try to learn Chinese or a different language, you're your brain starts functioning in a different way. You, you're growing, you're enriching yourself as a person and as an artist and as a dancer, basically. Mm -hmm. So Gregory, you are one of the choreographers. You did Welcome to Welcome a Stranger. And when Daniil came to you, what did he propose exactly? It, well, it really came, came out of the blue. Um, I was a, I'm based in New York City, and I have a company in New York called The Dash Ensemble. And um, I've been creating most of my work with them. And, um, also was fortunate enough to start to be getting commissioned to work other places, and I had recently worked with Hubbard Street too. And um, Ilter actually saw my work on them and uh, approached me kind of through Daniil and said, hey, we're doing this project and we think you might be right for it. And then Daniil and I met, um, I think it was late 2014, talked. Um, Daniil was gracious enough also to take a lot of time with us. He came to see a few performances of my company. He spent time in rehearsals with us and really became sort of acquainted with our language and the type of, of work that we make. And um, then we just basically took those identities and, and brought them to, to, to these dancers uh, here, which, as you can see, they made my job very, very easy. <laughs> well, this is, this is the next question, because your dancers are phenomenal. And of course, they're colleagues of yours, the, the folks from ABT, American Ballet Theater. Um, was it easy to coax them to come in on this project? Um, I mean, there are different reasons why they do it, because it's an experimentation. And as I said, it's, it's very interesting to, to expand your horizon because we, we do certain things at ABT and we have this time. So it's sort of a discovery for each, each dancer to work with a certain choreographer, with a, a new choreographer, something new, learning a different language and trying stuff out. And you brought in the wonderful Céline Casson from yes. Montreal yes. for this particular production. 
What was the attraction um, for her? So Annabelle lopez who created the last piece with the video projections and all of that, I actually found her on YouTube. Um, I saw a video which I liked, a piece, I contacted her, we had coffee in New York, she happened to be in New York, and we worked on some stuff, and she, she envisioned me partnering Celine, because <laughs> Celine is sort of a muse to her, because she, worked, she created a lot of stuff on her in, back in Ballet de Genève in Switzerland, and so she just put two and two together, and she's like, I want you to partner her for this, and that. because I actually, learned that piece which I saw on YouTube was actually Celine. <laughs> so it came full circle and once we approached Annabelle for this project, she, um, she suggested that I partner Celine and we said, I think it's a, we, we all thought it was a great idea because she's also somebody who's more of a contemporary dancer than our dancers. Mm -hmm. And she's somebody we can look up to. And she's sort of a role model for all of us in, in many ways, uh, in work ethic, in, uh, the way she appro approaches movement, and she is just great. So. <laughs> in Welcome a Stranger, Gregory, I mean, it's very interesting because here you have these unique dancers, and yet you're enabling them to move in very different ways. That kind of process, introducing that new vocabulary to, to probably a few of them, it must have been a challenge. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a tremendous exchange. So one of the things that was unique for us is that Daniil allowed me to bring my entire company into the creation process with me. So, and it teamed up perfectly because I had a cast of five and I have about six in my group. So we really went like one for one and my, all my dancers were there to help create and share the language so that all the crazy things that I was saying <laughs> actually looked like a reality because I had actual physical evidence with me to show that it was possible <laughs> and to, 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 to help uh, create more uh, encouragement. And it was tremendous because we also learned so much from them as well because the, the level of artistry and, and the work ethic and, uh, and the, um, just the bravery that they have as artists was something that was very inspiring to us and I feel actually helped improve the way that, that we work as well. So there was a lot of, of, of mutual um, benefits happening. Hmm. Yeah. Now, it's interesting because you've come out in your, in your robe from Simkin in the stage. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you, you were just talking behind the stage, how you like to kind of abstract things a little bit. Yeah, I, I like this because you don't know, was I on stage? Was it a costume? Is it not a costume? It's actually my real robe. <laughs> and it was part of my costume, and I like those aspects when, you know in those Kaufman movies like Being John Malkovich, Adaptation, um, uh, uh, Synoctity in New York, uh, where you don't know what is reality, what is scripted, <coughs> and the movie's actually, be actually about a writer who writes a script, and I like that kind of like, mashup of reality, so this is my mashup of reality right now. <laughs> <laughs> the reality that you put forward in uh, Annabelle, Annabelle's piece is quite remarkable, Islands of Memories, uh, and I really want to talk about the set design and the visual design for that particular piece. You're working with infrared uh, sensors? Uh, yes, um, the initial idea was to create kind of uh, digital reflection of the dancer movement, so, and uh, with the uh, help of that, create additional context of, uh, of, uh, for existing step text of the choreography. So technically, it's an uh, interactive uh, video installation on the floor, projection with projection on the floor. Above, we have a camera working in infrared mode. Uh, why infrared? Because a in normal camera will, would see the projection and react on the projection itself, what we don't want. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So this happens in real time. Yeah. This is not pre-recorded. Every time we perform, the projections are ever so slightly different because um, the infrared camera is picking up the silhouette of the dancers. Mm -hmm. So um, it's like adding another layer to the whole choreography. Mm -hmm. That's what my father is trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so from your perspective as, as a dancer, how challenging is it to not only be dancing with projections that are literally surrounding you, but you've also got mirrors behind you that are capturing uh, the performance as well. How challenging is that? Um, by now we got used to it a little bit, but it was a learning curve the first time. 
it's very difficult. <laughs> One last question before we open up to your comments and questions. And this is about the very first piece, Nocturne, Etude and Prelude, which is Norma Elo's piece. Um, again, what you're talking about in, in Annabella Cho's is this kind of off-balance sense that mm -hmm. you had to adjust to. His is very precise. It's very on point. On, well, not literally on point, but very okay. precise. <laughs> so um, what was it like to work with somebody like Norma Elo? Uh, Yorma was a pleasure to work with because um, he's very balanced and uh, very funny as well. And it was just, it is sort of classical, but not at the same time. It's, it, there's some, he has a very quirky aesthetic. The thing is that James worked with him for 10 years at Boston Ballet. So that's how the initial connection happened. And we're, originally we wanted to create just one piece and had have some already um, existing pieces in the evening. But then again, we started looking and we s ended with the idea, why not go full out with this and like go for new creations. And then we were looking for choreographers and I remember that James worked with him and that was also an incentive for um, Yorma to work with us. And I kind of knew him, we had mutual friends, and it just happened naturally, and we we're very happy with the result, and we, um, it's also very enjoyable to dance, mm -hmm. the first piece, because it has a certain underlying uh, serenity and beauty in it, and the music is beautiful, and mm -hmm. David Fran is a great pianist, and we, um, and you can just like, become one with the music. Mm -hmm.